Hello everyone and welcome to this 5 episode Terraform series. My name is Randy and I'll be your guide in mastering Terraform, the infrastructure as a code tool that is changing the way we provision and manage infrastructure today. Whether you're new to Terraform or looking to learn advanced concepts, this video right here is for you. As part of this first video, we'll explore why traditional infrastructure provisioning fell short and why infrastructure as a code is becoming the industry standard. I'll also introduce you to the core concepts of Terraform, including the provider's blocks, resource blocks, and state management. And at the end, we'll get into a hands-on exercise to get your hands dirty. Let's get started. But first, let's rewind a little bit. I'm sure you might be wondering how infrastructure was provisioned before the era of Terraform and infrastructure as a code. And of course, that's a valid question to have. Infrastructures were managed manually, often in data centers filled with racks of servers or by manually creating your services using the graphical user interface. Every change required a hands-on approach and scaling was a nightmare. But what's a graphical user interface, you might wonder. A graphical user interface or what we call a GUI is a visual way for users to interact with your computers and software applications. So let's say you log into your AWS application and create an EC2 instance for example. You can safely say you used your graphical user interface to do that. But that's not the focus of the day, cause due to how time consuming it was to manually create these resources and the number of errors the developers were making while manually executing the stacks, they decided to migrate towards a more efficient and reliable approach leading to the birth of infrastructure as a code. Just like we manage our application code, Infrastructure as a code allows us to define and manage infrastructure using code. Terraform relies on some key concepts such as providers, resources, and state management. Providers are plugins or modules responsible for defining and managing resources in a specific infrastructure platform or service. They serve as a bridge between Terraform and the targeted cloud or system. Providers typically handle authentication, API requests, and resource lifecycle management. Here is an example of a provider's block in Terraform for configuring AWS as the provider. In this example, the AWS provider is defined, and the region attribute specifies the AWS region to operate in. This provider block tells Terraform to use AWS providers to manage the resources in this specific region. And you can replace the name AWS with the name of any cloud provider like Azure, Google or even GCP, depending on the infrastructure's need. Providers allow you to abstract away from the underlying complexities of various cloud providers and manage resources consistently using Terraform. Now let's talk about the resource block. Resources refer to the fundamental components or entities that make up your cloud infrastructure. These resources could include virtual servers, databases, storage volumes, network components, and various other services provided by AWS or any other cloud provider. Resources are the building blocks you use to design and create your cloud-based application or services. For example, here are a few resources you can have in your resource block for your AWS infrastructure. An EC2 instance, RDS, an S3 bucket, a VPC, Lambda, SNS, Elastic Load Balancers, and more. In the past, these resources were manually created, but Terraform an infrastructure as a code tool allows you to define and manage these AWS resources using a declarative code, making it easier to provision and manage your AWS cloud resources. You can easily track the state of your infrastructure and roll back if you face any issues. And that leads me to my next point, which is state management. In Terraform, state management is a crucial aspect of its tool's functionality. It ensures that Terraform is aware and can track the current state of its infrastructure. Here is how state management works in Terraform. When you apply Terraform configurations to create or modify infrastructure resources, Terraform creates a state file. The state file is a JSON file that contains information about the resources Terraform manages, their current configurations, and their dependencies. Terraform uses the state file to keep track of the resources it manages and their attributes. It knows the exact resources which were created, modified, or destroyed during each run State management also helps with currency control. When multiple users or automation systems are working with the same Terraform configuration, state management ensures that changes are made in a controlled manner, preventing conflicts. The state file maintains a mapping between your configuration and the actual resources in your cloud provider. This mapping allows Terraform to understand which configuration responds to which real-world resources. 
when you remove a resource configuration from your Terraform code. State management helps Terraform identify and delete the corresponding resource in the cloud provider, ensuring that your infrastructure is up to date and in the desired state you want. Terraform uses the information in the state file to understand the dependencies between resources. This is important for resource provisioning in the correct order. State management is crucial in Terraform as it ensures that the platform is aware of the current state of your infrastructure. Terraform provides various state management systems to cater to the different needs. By default, Terraform stores the state locally in the terraform.tf state file, making it easy to get started, but to be sincere, it's not suitable for production use. For more robust solutions, Terraform offers a remote state backend, such as the Amazon S3, Azure Blob Store, Google Cloud Storage, Terraform Cloud, and more. This backend provides a secure and scalable option for storing and managing the Terraform state files. Additionally, Terraform allows users to store states in databases, key value stores, and even custom HTTPS backends, providing flexibility to tailor state management to the specific organizational requirements. Choosing the right state management system depends on factors such as security, collaboration needs, and compatibility with your chosen infrastructure. Remote state backends like those offered by the major cloud providers or Terraform Cloud are often preferred for collaborative projects and production environments. They offer features such as access control, versioning, and collaboration tools enhancing the team's productivity and ensuring that the state data remains secure. Whether you opt for a cloud-based storage like Amazon S3 or use a key value store, Terraform's flexible state management system empowers you to provision and manage infrastructures efficiently. When diving into Terraform, understanding the significance of the state management and selecting the right backend for your project will set you up for success. Overall, state management in Terraform is essential for maintaining the desired infrastructure state, tracking changes, and ensuring that your infrastructure is in sync with your configuration. It's a critical part of Terraform's functionality and helps you to achieve infrastructure as a code principles efficiently. I know I used blocks a lot throughout the video, like the providers block, resource blocks, variable blocks, and all of those. In Terraform, blocks are essential structured elements used to define various components within a configuration. Blocks are defined using curly braces and contains key value pairs or nested blocks within their own configuration settings. They provide a structured way to specify resources, variables, outputs, providers, and other elements in your Terraform configuration. For instance, when defining the provider's configuration, you use a provider's block to specify the details like the provider's name, access credentials, and regions. Similarly, when defining resources like the AWS instances, you use the resource block to declare the resource type, attributes, and the dependencies. Blocks ensure that your Terraform configuration is well-organized, reliable, and maintainable. They create a clear delineation between the different aspects of your infrastructure, making it easier to manage and understand your code. As you might have noticed, there are different types of blocks in Terraform, and each serves a specific purpose, contributing to the modularity and flexibility of your infrastructure as a code configuration. But guess what? Enough theory. Let's get our hands dirty. In this episode, We'll set up Terraform and create our very first simple infrastructure. Follow along with the exercise and I'll guide you through the process. You ready? Let's go. First, you want to make sure you have an AWS account as well as VS Code installed on your Mac or Windows computer. As you can see, prior to this video, I did install VS Code on my computer. But for us to interact with AWS, we need to set up our AWS profile. So go to AWS create a user and under that user, create an access key and a secret access key. It should look something like this. But be sure to write this down somewhere safe since once you close this page, you wouldn't be able to access it anymore. Once you're ready, go on to VS Code and then to the AWS icon you just downloaded and hit on connect to AWS to get started. It should give you an option to add a profile. Put in the access key, secret and as you can see, Terraform is currently being installed. Now, in order to make sure that Terraform has been installed successfully, I'll run the Terraform dash dash version command. This will provide me with the exact version of Terraform currently running on my terminal. And in this case, it's the Terraform version 1.61. 
now that we do have Terraform installed on our terminal, let's go ahead and start running